So the uh, thing I'm presenting today is a um, simple solution to making your websites called Lumikki. It's, um, it means Snow White in Finnish. That's why the curl picture is there, but basically just because I like the we picture. Have mellow, uh, worthy, I <laughs> Sorry, Melo? Well, if you, if, I, I, I just googled for Melo. I'm not very well up on the... That means a lot of scene. noise in Finnish, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I discovered it seems to refer to the, seems to be the surname of a, of, a, of a popular blues chanteuse. <laughs> Katie Melo, you mean? Oh, you I bought some of her songs on iTunes. That's yeah. another... Yeah, very good. Go everybody there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lumiki is not an artist yet, so... Back to the subject, it's basically a uh, preprocessor for creating uh, HTML originally, but currently any XML will do. Because I got into very deep debugging problems um, with the regular HTML, so I just made Lumiki 2 to just require everything to be XML. Simplifies a lot. It's at version 0 0.22, and there's probably maintenance by me, but no active development because it's ready. I'm not using it, so be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> it's a command line tool, and uh, just for the sake of simplicity and the Lua um, tradition, I listed the um, number of lines here that, that the program actually is having. This is the main um, logic of it all. So it's 1,000 lines of Lua code. Uh, that includes comments, so you probably end up only with 700 or something. Um, with that, you don't do anything. But if you add filters to that, which is basically the set of macros that allow you to get boosted in your HTML code or help generate that, um, then you're actually pretty far, far off and you're still around 2,000 lines of Lua that you're using. Then there's a couple of um, files simply for adapting to different operating systems um, since it's pure Lua. Um, I used to run it on Windows and Linux and OS X, but, but now it's sort of only tested on the Mac. Should work, but most likely not. Um, I distribute it on a Fink via a little startup script, which basically is for the non-Lua people to not notice that they are using Lua. So that file on the left is based on their bin um, directory, and it starts up Lua and it starts the main.lua, which is an interesting hack here. It's all, only and sole purpose is to find out where the hell it is living and then to link in the other um, Lua files. We did complain about that on the list, but I mean, it works. It's just 15 lines of like, it's basically doing pattern matching with its own name and the Lua path, finding out where it finds itself and then being, being pleased and using that path. Well, um, why did I do it? It's basically a long journey back to 95, and uh, I did my first websites then using HTML and server-side include, um, basically ending up using include files as kind of macros, which is very sick. Uh, then I bought CityDesk for Windows, which looks like this. And it's, well, a decent commercial solution, but it sort of expects your sites to follow a certain pattern. And you're very well prepared and, and served if you like that. If you don't, um, it's a problem. One of the problems is that all of your data is stored in one big database file. So if you correct some typos and, and store that on the subversion, you're basically committing multiple megabytes again. So it really um, wasn't my flavor. I went to an Adobe Dreamweaver presentation. And uh, after the half an hour, I still didn't get it. So I thought it was not for me. <laughs> um, then I changed to Mac and OS X RapidWeaver, which should be coming from behind the corner somewhere. No? Yes? Uh, that's actually a brilliant product. It's, it's very nice, but it's got the same issue as with the city desk. It uses one gigantic file, and uh, I will show at the end, uh, I've got a picture or a screenshot of how my menus look like. I mean, they just simply suck, and it's not my fault, it's the tools. 
just to pinpoint <laughs> that I'm even not trying to fix it on my website. So basically, um, that was about the commercial side I, I know about. Um, I would like to take any kinds of tips from you because I'm, I'm still using the, um, the last of the commercials, the um, Dreamweaver. No, the Rabbit Weaver, thank you. Currently, I'm not really pleased with that. Open source, briefly. Uh, server side include, I mean, who comes up with these letters anyway? Uh, CGI, you know, that's sort of the lowest of the lowest bottoms. Perl, oh, that's even lower. <laughs> and, and PHP is sort of like C in web. It stinks. Um, too many people must use that. And uh, server side, what's that? Like style pages. I've tried my best, you know, but, you know, it's simply too troublesome having the HTML syntax and having the style sheet syntax and, and like I don't, I don't have a dual core brain, actually I should but it's not working that way. So, so I can't just like chuckle between the two, um, so I gave up on that. And that actually leads, well we'll come to that later but uh, one of the design criteria of Lumiki was to make it really really simple for the average HTML coder. So much of the syntax I'm using there is just sort of, it looks like an extension of HTML. It actually is very close to something that was presented yesterday. Who was it? Uh, PDF Luatec. Yeah. Everything that was said about Luatec I was actually seeing as being there in Lumiki as well. At least, well, much of that. So, all is possible with these technologies, but uh, it would take the whole life and a little bit more to master them. So, um, it seems there's no unified sidewise management package available. If you know one, I'll get one. This is the design criteria that I said about. Um, there's a couple of uh, very Lua-derived uh, kind of feeling-like things with Lumikki. One is that everything you can re-assign um, um, or redefine. If you don't like the filters, just well, derive your own or replace them or do whatever. And you don't have to touch the Lumiki code in order to do that. And um, I will actually, it's better if I show some demos later about that instead of just talking about it. Things I like, this lower one is actually the one having most promise for the future. Um, my plans for the thing is to apply it to our scout troop so that we would use a uh, subversion to manage our websites. Meaning there would be people who are just inputting data into there and there would be others who are managing the structure but there would be no single administrator for the whole thing. And what happens or what would happen when, when the subversion commit is done, it would run Lumiki on the server and if the run fails, if there's some kind of syntax checking error, then the subversion commit fails, which means that automatically your website is always kind of in good, good uh, known condition. And personally, I like the, the um, having other people do the content, others the technique, but still with the same subversion rights, because that allows the content people to gradually grow into doing administration work without having to like uh, let them know too much that like not having any, any kind of um, fences in between. What you can do with Lumiki is encapsulate all your fancy favorite techniques underneath it so that nobody would know. Um, one sample I have uses JavaScript for making multi-language pages and the, the one who's doing the HTML has no clue what, who's doing that or what technique it's doing, uh, it's using for that. So actually let's um, break in for some demonstration here. Okay, here's the Lumiki self-test self -test, uh, file, which has the multiple language stuff. So there's Finnish, Swedish, English, German, Italian, Portuguese, thanks for, don't remember who helped with that, and Greek. You can check the Greek, please, if you wouldn't mind. Um, then let's bring in This is the source code for that thing. <coughs> Called uh, test.lxm. Well, anyways. 
for Lumiki XML. One of the biggest problems has been to find out the right suffix. I'm still not very pleased with that. No suffix is the right suffix. Oh, and making it executable. We have to consider. This is how it uh, looks. It's okay. Yeah, you can read that, right? So there's a um, document block <laughs> over there, which is basically creating your head and body structures along the way. So um, it's also doing stuff like if you use JavaScript later in the document, that is actually cast so that when the actual output is done, it's knowing that, hey, somebody later in the, in the file was using JavaScript, so we're actually placing his programs on the back of our head in the head where it needs to be because otherwise it wouldn't work in the browser. Because here we have no idea yet about um, what features of Lumiki, what filters would be used. Let me go further. There's a couple of just lazy man's features such as um, the ending slash thing over there, because you know, the filter knows that it was H1 you are using, so why repeat that? I'm sort of breaking the XML at places, but just for the fun of that. Uh, drop cap is also like just because we can kind of thing, and that's causing the big T over here. <laughs> so all the big T has been, uh, how it's come is, here's the size, and it's applying to until here, until the end of the cap, uh, um, the chapter, or that part. Okay. Not getting much hurrays, hurrays yet, so, so we'll need to add on something more. Food mo footnote is uh, a thing which has relevant text, but not so relevant to be in the text. So that's placed in the one part, similar than if you make a footnote in, in Word. But what the filter does, it actually creates its own footnotes uh, table, because it's just a Lua script and the state is uh, persistent. So uh, it can actually create its own state and memory path along the filtering way. Meaning, in the first place, it's placing footnotes and uh, superscript one, and when it actually reaches the end of the document, you end up having the relevant text, but not so relevant to be in the text. That's pretty fun. Uh, the language stuff is here. So you first just uh, define the languages, and uh, basically if I was internet connected, why am I not? It should be, it would be nice to be, because, um, okay, it's not reaching until he, up till here. If I was internet connected, it would actually have fetched some uh, public flag icons in uh, uh, front of those, uh, those texts. And nobody's telling the, it where the flag icons are being fetched, but the flag macro happens to know a, a site whose owner hasn't complained me yet, <laughs> um, <laughs> where, where I'm sort of ripping the, the flags on the, on the run. I did make a sort of to-do comment that it would be nice to have some other URL there probably. But Here's the multiple languages. Just one chapter for each. Now there's certainly, uh, this suits rather fine for me, where, where I'm the sole creator of the file and uh, I know a couple of languages that I would like the same feature to have. I mean, it's sharing the layout, but inserting the text contents in several languages. Now, somebody else would actually want separate interpreters um, to produce this language. And then he would be, or she would be just checking the language macro that I have there making a derived version of her own, which would read the stuff from some external files, because there's actually no limits to what the macros can do, since they are just to a code. And um, that would pretty much be it. Okay. Uh, 
let's go further with the presentation. Any questions so far? Why is the guy not getting the cursor on the right screen? Okay. Demonstration sample side I'm skipping because I don't have the internet connectivity. Sorry, custom macros. Um, I had plans to make uh, site upload as part of Luminki because that is part of the commercial packages. It's very nice to have your editing done and just pushing the publish and waiting for a while and, and knowing that it's there. But uh, luckily I didn't do that. I, um, I waited long enough to realize that I hadn't used the right search name for Fink for, for finding the, um, the tool I need. I was looking for something FTP but it was actually called site copy. And what it does, it, it uh, synchronizes your local folders with the remote site, only moving the stuff that has changed. So I think it's actually storing some kind of a hash file on the, on the remote FTP uh, server and checking that first. It's very brilliant, easy to use, and um, I ended up using Make to integrate that with Lumiki. So there's absolutely no kind of like interface between those two, but it makes sense to use the both. Of course, in the Scout Group uh, example, I wouldn't because then the subversion would actually be running on the same server where the website sites are, so it can be just copied. Already to uh, talked a little bit about the future uh, the subversion stuff. Ajax support would be nice if I, only I knew that or had the time to read those books, you know. Have you seen those in the shops? 700 pages, basic introduction to Ajax kind of thing. Um, menu system would be nice, uh, themes are uh, very nice because also the commercial applications here are always having the theme ability button where you just, you know, change the whole site layout and the persons who are visiting your site think that you have actually changed a lot even though nothing happened. So, um, wouldn't mind that. These can all be done but, uh, I don't know, something obviously went wrong because I'm not using it by myself. Um, this is the last picture, it's about my favorite, come on, that one, favorite embedded little device which cost 90 euros and that was the one that Andre was uh, mentioning, that's his in the box over there. Um, I'm running subversion on that and people do all kinds of very weird stuff with it. So, no, it's yours. Yeah. Such, a the size. Such a thing. The nicest feature of it, it doesn't have a fan. So it's actually living in my children's room, as you can see. Basically, I'm waiting for the Nokia personal server. Uh, I think there would actually be a marketplace for such a device, which is headless, having no display, completely quiet, sort of like a, a, a home media or a shared data server. Nowadays, there's homes where there are like multiple computers and uh, um, it just needs to be done easy enough. What the device actually is, like what Cisco is thinking it to be, is um, sharing the USB drive over the Ethernet. And that's all it should be doing. <coughs> but they made it with Linux and they had to give the uh, firmware open and uh, currently if you use the open firmware, it's much faster it takes less space on your device <coughs> and um, I, I think Cisco should just start using that and not, waste, not wasting their time with, the, with doing their own firmware. This is one nice picture of those slugs. Somebody's having them as a compiler farm <laughs> <laughs> with the names printed in, in the top.